Hello and welcome to the third video of the onboarding video series for the Eclipse Data Space Connector. So my name is Paul and in this video we are going to talk a bit about the nomenclature, a few, a few words, basic, the basic vocabulary that, we are, that we'll be using in the EDC so that when you read something and one of these words comes up you instantly know what that we are talking about. Since the project is called the Eclipse Data Space Connector, the first and possibly the most important one is to ask yourself, what is a connector? What do, we, what do we mean when we say connector? Essentially, a connector is more of a logical concept rather than an actual definition. So a connector can be a standalone application that somehow or that intermingles a bit with the concept of a launcher. So it can be a standalone app, it can run inside a Docker container, it can also be embedded in another Java application. So that's pretty flexible. So the what the connector then becomes is sort of a concept or a, a gateway into a data space. And into an Eclipse data space, we'll, we'll be using the Eclipse data space connector. So the repository that you checked out and that we t took a look um, before, um, that's the connector core and a few things around it. But basically, you can embed it into your existing Java application, into your, to, into your ERP application, whatever. A connector is a concept or is a conceptual thing. Then let's talk about the next thing, which is an extension. We're always talking about extensions and how we can extend everything and everything becomes an extension. So what is an extension? An extension is an implementation of, a, of an interface which resides in the SPI. What that is, is it enriches the core connector code with functionality. Say you want a configuration extension that uses Postgres, then that's something you can plug into the connector and that handles one certain task for you. So an extension has a few defining characteristics. One of them I already mentioned, it has one job. So you shouldn't pack your entire application code, your entire business logic into an extension that would not be good because it just becomes un unmaintainable. So one extension should always have one job or one, um, one task to do. Um, from a code perspective, that means it implements the service extension interface. Let's take a look at one of the extensions, say maybe the, um, let's take a look. Or maybe, yeah, the transfer, the, the transfer process store. You don't need to know what this particular extension does at the moment. Just let's just take a look at the basic structure. So there is one class that should have the extension word in its class name, and it needs to implement the service extension interface. It, it once that is done, it will then, um, it can then override or implement a few lifecycle methods, like for example, initialize. Initialize is called during extension boot up and it receives the extension context um, that you can use to either register or obtain services. An extension also can provide features that uh, on which other extensions can then depend and it can define um, it can define its own dependencies via the um, requires method that would look like that. Something like this. We will hear about this in greater detail when we talk about the service loader mechanism, which comes on in the next video. For now, we should um, just remember that an extension is basically an infrastructure class takes care of, auto wi of wiring services, of resolving dependencies, um, and basically 
boots up the, the business object. In this case, that would be the in-memory transfer process store. Again, you don't have to know what this particular class da does, just that it's there. And in this case, what the extension does, it registers a, an in-memory transfer process store for its interface, the transfer process store. You could also have a transfer process store based on a database or based on, I don't know, a file or whatever. In this case, that's the in-memory transfer process store. That's the one half of an extension. And the other half that you always need is the plugin file that must reside in the resources meta inf services directory. And that file is a special file. Its name must be the fully qualified class name of the interface, in this case, service extension. So I'm going to make this a bit bigger. So the file is called org eclipse dataspace connector dot spi dot system dot service extension. And it contains, apart from copyright, just one string, which is the fully qualified class name of the implementor. So in this case, that would be the in-memory transfer process store except, uh, extension, as you can see here. What that does is during boot up, when the, when the entire connector or the runtime is, um, is launched, it um, binds the, or it, it makes the in-memory transfer process store extension available under its interface. So that's basically an extension. Say you wanted to add your own method of authentication or authorization, that would mean that you'd have to create an extension for that. Then just put it in the extensions folder and um, when, it, when, when the time comes to create your own, your own launcher, you just depend against it and that's it. So the next thing on, on our list is a runtime. A runtime is in essence a class that defines a main method. You will find these runtimes in most cases together with a launcher. Let's just take a look at the basic launcher that we have here. So it has um, it has the, the keyword runtime in its name. Most in most cases it defines a main method. So it's the main entry point to the application, application and it, take, it, it, it takes care of booting up and configuring the entire connector. So a connector consists at least of, a run, of one run, of a runtime. So, or you, you could say a runtime is what makes a connector a connector. I'm just gonna move my camera image a bit over here and make it a bit smaller so you can see the code better. It, for example, it um, initializes the extension context, it sets up the logger, it boots the extensions, it loads the vault, all these kind of things. Um, we will hear about them in greater detail in a later video. For now, let's just remember that a runtime is basically the main entry point that um, initializes and boots up the entire application. Next up, we have a launcher. A launcher is quite similar to what a runtime is, but a runtime on its own doesn't do much. It, when it comes together with a build file, that's when it becomes a launcher and when actu an actual running jar file um, results. So in, this, in our case, a launcher is a runtime plus a build file. And this build file, what this does is it defines what modules are um, being compiled into the jar file. So for example, in the SPI package, we have a transfer process store. And here we define that our launcher, the basic launcher, uses the in-memory transfer process store. So the, the core, the SPI, defines the interface and what implementation gets loaded at compiled or at runtime, that is defined by which module is actually added here. So a launcher is the combination of a runtime and a build, con and a build file, which then results into a runnable jar file. 
we use the shadow jar plugin but you can also use whatever whatever you like you can do this um, by any means you deem you deem appropriate um, so that's a launcher when a launcher so a launcher is basically the runnable application if you ever want to run something you need a launcher some launchers like the end-to-end -end launcher also have a docker file that means that's a launcher which is intended to run inside docker um, or we have one that e that is using JUnit, so that's basically a, a launcher that runs inside, J or that's a launcher that lets the connector run inside JUnit. And then, when talking about the EDC, we will always hear about consumers and providers. Sometimes they are called clients and or producers, but what we always mean is. We have two connectors. We have one connector requesting data and one connector providing data. So like the name suggests, the provider connector is the one which serves the data and the consumer connector is the one which consumes the data. Depending on the actual um, transfer, that can mean a pull or a push configuration. Let's just assume because it's the easiest way possible you have two connectors the one the provider connector has a file and the consumer connector wants to have that file then the uh, provider connector so that the consumer connector tells the provider connector where to copy that file and the provider actually copies it there in more elaborate use cases that will involve provisioning of for example cloud resources that's by the way also why everything is a is persistent and is asynchronous um, so that these connectors they can you know die at any moment and then resume operation as if nothing happened but basically uh, connectors you always need two of them a consumer and a provider you will come across these notions or these this nomenclature in some of the documentation so you should know what we mean by that um, previously we called them clients so you might stumble across the word client somewhere client and consumer means the exact same thing so that was the video about nomenclature I hope you enjoyed it I hope you know more than you did before and see you in the next one